Good evening and Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Cathedral of Mary our Queen, especially to those who may be visiting. The readings for today's celebration may be, may be found in the Ritual Song Hymnal at number 1103. Our presider today is Archbishop Laurie. Our opening hymn is number 521, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 521 in the hymnal. Please rise and join in the singing as we begin our celebration.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. We gather with the greatest of joy on this Christmas Eve to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, our brother, our Savior, and our God. 
And on this night of joy, we ask the Lord, the Prince of Peace, to come upon us, to draw near to us, and to give us and to our world that peace we so desire. This night, I welcome all of you to this beautiful Cathedral of Mary, our Queen. I welcome all of those who will join us by radio on WCBM, as well as by the live, uh, the, the live cast that will also be conducted. Dear friends, let us now place ourselves in God's presence and let us ask for the grace to celebrate these mysteries worthily. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <laughs>
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne, and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Oh 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. 
Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Monsignor Boy, Father DeFusco, Brother Deacon, all dear friends in the Lord Jesus. Yesterday, I went to visit a very good friend of mine in Charlotte, North Carolina. His name was Bishop William Curlin the Bishop Emeritus of Charlotte, and formerly a priest of the Archdiocese of Washington, just as once I was. At 90 years of age, Bishop Curlin was nearing death, and indeed, last evening, about this time, he departed for eternity. I met Bishop Curlin in 1972, when he was Father Curlin. At the time, he was the director of vocations, and I was a seminarian. Ours was an instant friendship, but a friendship that lasted for decades. As a dedicated parish priest, a brilliant preacher, and a passionate lover of the poor and the sick, Bishop Curlin remains my ideal for how to live my vocation. But don't take it from me. Mother Teresa thought the same thing, and she sought him out for spiritual advice whenever she came to the United States. Bishop Curlin's love and care have been a constant part of my life. It's a friendship that I averted to, thought about, and cherished every single day. And I am sure his friendship changed the course of my life. But there's more. I'm not the only one. There are probably hundreds and hundreds of what I like to call Curlinites, men and women 
in all walks of life whose lives were changed by his friendship, compassion, and priestly love. Many of us know one another, and we all have the same story to tell. I will bet that many of you have a Bishop Curlin-like figure in your life, someone who took an interest in you when you were young, someone whose example and friendship guided the course of your life. It might have been a teacher. It might have been a coach, like the assistant lacrosse coach at Calvert Hall, Dave Huntley, who went home to God only a few days ago. During these days of Christmas, it might be good for all of us, dear friends, to remember and to pray for those who helped us get our start in life, whether or not we actually followed the good and sound advice that was offered us. And as you know, when we stop to realize the impact of people like that on our lives, don't we have the urge to connect with them? If we have maintained a friendship with our mentors over the years, we will want to deepen that friendship. If our contact with our mentors has been spotty, isn't there something in us that wants to pick up the phone and call or send an email or maybe even get in the car and visit in person? And if our mentors have gone home to God, do we not still feel their influence in our lives? Years later, a sort of spiritual friendship that transcends time and eternity. Tonight, I invite you to think of Jesus with the same warmth the same trust, the same love and gratitude that normally we reserve for those who have guided and helped us along the path of life. We've just heard the heartwarming story of the birth of Jesus, the poverty of the stable and the manger, the oxen and donkeys, the starlit sky, the song of the angels, the amazement of shepherds, the worried husband, the loving mother, the infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. This is the way the Son of God chose to draw near to us as our ultimate, men as our ultimate mentor, our prophet, our priest and savior, our king, and the lover of our souls. God the Son became one of us. Jesus is like every guide and protector in our lives, only better. Just as our mentors seem to find us in times of trouble or confusion, so it was that God in his love for the world sent his son to a troubled humanity to be with us, to experience our poverty and our pain, to offer us hope, to bind up our wounds, to suffer and die for us, to be for you and me the way, the truth, and the life. Like all good mentors, Jesus does not overwhelm us with his power or his wisdom. He was born humble, and he moved about as one who was meek and humble of heart. Yet 
who he was, what he said, and what he did changed everything for billions and billions of people in every epoch of history, and ultimately, he has changed the course of history itself. And even as our mentors always seem to be there for us, even after a long period of time has passed, so too the Son of God assumed our human nature permanently, and he draws near to us not just for an hour or a day or a year, but always. For even though the Savior walked this earth just a little more than three decades, he's with us to the end of the world. And in his glorified humanity, sits at the right hand of the Father, he, the Son of God. And then there is this. Just as my mentor, Bishop Curlin, was a mentor to many others, so too Jesus loves each one of us in a deep and personal way, more than we love ourselves, while at the same time drawing near to every person. For Jesus is the true light that enlightens every person born into this world. And what's more, he's gathered all those whose lives he has touched into his church so that we might know him and love him, so that we might come to know and love one another and help each other in following him unreservedly. Finally, even as none of us even as none of us who are mentees of Bishop Curlin measure up to him, so too none of us in the church ever measure up to the Lord's goodness. Yet for all of our sinfulness, for all of our foibles, it is in the church that we find the Lord, the Lord who comes to us constantly in word and sacrament, and in the friendship of charity, charity for the poor and the sick and the marginalized. This Christmas, let us have the courage to ask about our relationship with the one who is the mentor of mentors, the guide of all guides, the only one in whose name can be found eternal salvation. What's our relationship with the Lord like? Has our relationship with the Lord deepened day by day with daily prayer and weekly mass? Or the Lord's teaching an example what guides our daily life? Do we experience the joy of allowing the joy of the gospel to take root in our lives and to become the lens through which we see ourselves, our families, our friends, our enemies, and the church herself? And do we daily reach out to the Savior who first sought us out by becoming one of us. Or maybe we'll find our relationship with the Lord is trailed off, like the relationship with the former coach or teacher whom we still respect, but we rarely call or visit. Or it could be that our relationship with the Lord is almost non-existent, maybe out of habit, maybe out of fear, maybe because of the bad example of others. When we finally do reconnect 
with those mentors who have loved us so. Deep down, we feel that we've done ourselves a wonderful favor. Let this be our gift to the Lord, to those around us, and to ourselves, that this Christmas, when we peer into the stable and behold the Christ child, we will resolve in God's grace to deepen our connection, our relationship to our Savior in the church. And if that relationship is cold or distant, to draw near to him who in his mercy has made himself utterly and lovingly accessible to us. In the words of Pope Francis, contemplating his humble and infinite love, let us simply tell him, thank you. Thank you because you have done all this for me. May you have a most blessed and a most joyous Christmas. Let us now profess our holy Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living of the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we who have been shown the light that shines in the darkness, pray now for our needs and the needs of all the world. Let us make as our response Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Glory, and all church leaders, that our words and actions will proclaim to all the saving event of God's living among us, we pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> that the Prince of Peace may shine on all who dwell in the darkness of violence or war, Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and those who lead it, that true freedom and justice may reign, we pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless.
homeless, the unemployed, and refugees, that Jesus Christ who came into the world as one who was destitute and marginalized will love and rescue them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of love may shine on our family and on those who are alone during this holy season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of healing may shine on the sick, the dying, and grieving among us. And for those who have died, whose memories are with us at this special time, especially for Charles W. McCullough, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christians will be serious in responding to the universal call to holiness by living their faith with great fervor this new year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> o oh God, you sent us the eternal light to lead us out of darkness, the darkness of fear and doubt. During this holy season, make us aware that the light of Christ surrounds us and calls us to be a people of light for others. We pray all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 523, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 523 in the hymnal.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her, throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us in the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from every sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Our peace. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be.
Our communion hymn is number 527, Silent Night, number 527 in the hymn. Our second communion hymn is number 525, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, number 525 in the hymn.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the Feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the Archbishop sends us forth with his blessings, I would like to say a few words of gratitude. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for being here tonight and joining us at the Cathedral for Christmas Mass. I want you to know you're always most welcome here at the spiritual home of the Catholics of the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Please take home a copy of our bulletin. It lists for you all the ways that we're trying to use technology and social media to reach beyond our walls and campus and invite others to participate in the life of the parish and the wider church. Archbishop, thank you for being here tonight. You are most generous with your time to the cathedral, and I know the people and certainly I am very grateful for your many, many press times you are here. Thank you very much. Just thank you. You always thank your boss. Anyhow, I'd like to thank the many ministries that have made uh, Christmas uh, such a spectacular time here. It's been a marvelous evening of uh, masses. I think until we got here tonight, we had 3,000 people here between the 4 and the 6 o'clock mass. So I want to thank our music ministry under the direction of Glenn Osborne for all you've done to help make our season so wonderful, our, our day so wonderful. Thank you very much. I want to say a word of thanks to our sacristan crew. Uh, Christmas Eve falling on a Sunday uh, presents many challenges to us who have to make it happen. And some of our sacristan crew have been here since 7 o'clock this morning. So I want to thank them. I want to So you can hold your applause and the rest of them will get all at the end here. Father DeFusco, thank you for making sure of all the details of liturgy. Deacon Bill Synth, I think this is your fifth Mass this weekend. I hope you can get in the door when you go home. Uh, thank Louise and your family for sharing you with us. To our ushers, our lectors, our EMs, our servers, all those who did such a marvelous job decorating the cathedral, thank you, thank you very, very much. And finally, I want to uh, wish all of you, on behalf of Father DeFusco and I, I want to wish all, wish all of you a very blessed Christmas season. And we look forward to welcoming all of you back to the cathedral for masses and for other celebrations. Have a wonderful Christmas. And you don't... Monsignor Boy has been very, very kind in thanking all of us and all those who contributed to the beauty of our liturgies, but this is our opportunity this Christmas Eve to express our thanks to you, Monsignor, and to your team for the wonderful pastoral care and leadership you give to our cathedral parish. Monsignor Boy, thank you so very much. And now in this time of Christmas joy, let us ask the Lord to bless us. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 520, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 520 in the hymn.
dog face toy. If I didn't know about Tiffany.